flashback Friday video for you guys today. In case you missed my first two videos, I have an OPI and China Glaze video, um, just kind of overviewing polishes that I had purchased between about 2009 to um, recently, 2014, 2000, 2015. I started this series just as a way to um, reconnect with my collection, sh sort of show off the highlights of what I personally think um, OPI and China Glaze and the brands that I'm going to be doing in the future have had over the last couple of years and um, you guys like the shop my stash sort of videos and so I thought I would show you um, just my favorite polishes from various brands um, throughout that time period and I've done OPI and I've done China Glaze. I will link both of those videos down below. Um, I also will link the website that I did most of my research off of. There is a blog that lists basically every nail polish collection by the year um, and it's an awesome resource for any sort of nail polish nerds out there. So I will link that. It will be the first link down below. Today is going to be Essie. This video is going to be a little bit different than the other ones because I um, haven't really purchased Essie in a chronological way. A lot of it, and you'll see, was purchased in a sort of massive bunch when Essie got huge on YouTube. Um, for me, Essie, when I started collecting, was very much a salon brand. It was very much the baby pinks and the bridal pinks and the work appropriate colors. And when I saw Essie in stores, Essie wasn't available in every single drugstore until kind of recently, in the last like four or five years. Um, Essie used to be basically only available in salons and beauty supply stores and you would see the display and it would be just like rows of baby pinks like two rows of different kinds of reds and then like a couple of different brighter pinks and maybe like one blue so that's where I entered into the nail polish world that's what my like view of Essie was for the longest time. Um, my very first Essie nail polish was actually the color in Ballet Slippers, which is a bridal, just work appropriate, neutral pink color. And um, this I purchased because I've, t I've told this story before, but my mom and her friends really loved that nail polish when I was little, and I just remember thinking Essie Ballet Slippers when I started collecting nail polish, so that was the first nail polish that I purchased from Essie off of an e-tailer. I honestly couldn't pick it out of a shelf. I still can't pick it out of a shelf. If you give me like 10 of Essie's bridal colors, I wouldn't be able to differentiate between them, but um, Essie's Ballet Slippers was the very first nail polish that I purchased from the brand on my own. I have a couple of other nail polishes that I purchased from Essie before I really um, started paying attention to Essie. I did the same thing um, with Essie as I did OPI and China Glaze where I tracked the tags on most of the blogs that I really liked, Scrangy being the one that I researched the most on. Um, I tracked the Essie tag through all of her posts and found a bunch of nail polishes that I liked. There weren't as many Essies as there were OPI or China Glaze though because I feel like again Essie wasn't really known for color at that point and they were and I mean you can see this in the retro revival collection that they just re they released promoting some of their old favorites. They're all salon colors except for one of them. One of which would be Starry Starry Night, which was a blue jelly glitter. And that was very different for Essie, in my opinion, compared to all the other colors that they released. This color in Angora Cardi was very much a favorite from the beginning, though. This is like a plummy neutral green color. It's a perfect fall color. I feel like it looks good on everyone. And I've talked about this basically since the beginning of my channel. Um, this one is Essie's Mint Candy Apple. It's a classic Essie color. It is very, very pastel and it's really pretty. It's, you know, it is a blue. I'm not saying that there were absolutely no blues in Essie's line. There were some blues, but it was like rare to see this come out of Essie, and I feel like that's why people made a big deal out of it when Essie released this color. Um, same thing with this. This is Sag Harbor, and this is a really pearly light blue color, which I purchased off an e-tailer, again, because I thought it was just so pretty and ethereal and just unique in terms of Essie's line. Then there were a bunch of corals that I purchased before I realized that I don't really like the coral tones on me. Um, in fact, I have gotten rid of a lot of Essie's in my collection, so a lot of the colors that um, I had 
first kind of hauled when I first got onto YouTube and collecting nail polishes. I don't really have them anymore because I don't really wear them. And, um, I like I never really wore them because they were these sort of corally colors. These two ended up staying in my collection though. This is the color in Cute as a Button and this is in the color California Coral. They're very, very similar. California Coral is a little bit darker. I ended up keeping these two because they are more pinky coral colors. In spring 2010, they released an entire collection of pastels, um, and actually there was like one red in it. And I got really excited for that collection because actually Scrangy had really, like, really praised the collection. The two that I ended up keeping out of the colors that I had purchased. Um, this one is Lilacism, which I feel like was a massive hit when it came out because it's a light purple. And again, that was very unique for Essie. The other color that I kept was Red Nouveau. This is a really, really opaque, slightly orangey toned red nail polish. And it's um, it's not got that sort of jelly formula that a lot of red colors have. This is f like pretty much just a cream. These were from that spring like collection that came out with Tarte Deco and Van de Gogh. Um, Neo Whimsical was a color that came out in that collection which were like pastel corals and pinks and peaches and I didn't keep any of them because I never wore them. After that came out the Resort 2010 collection came out which I just recently talked about in my spring nail polish picks video and that was kind of like for me when Essie started producing color and not necessarily baby pinks and um, salon colors anymore. They came out with the resort collection which was four colors and I remember thinking I have to get all four of them because they're so different than again anything that I own and anything that I feel like Essie has done and they're really beautifully done resort colors. This is in Playa del Platinum which is sort of like a gray toned khaki beige color. This is Turquoise and Caicos, this is Lapis of Luxury, and this is Splash of Grenadine. And again, I just talked about these so I'm not really going to go into them, but um, gorgeous colors, bright but also subdued. They're just really perfect sort of island type colors. Fall that year, I purchased pretty much that entire collection I think it was called the limited addiction collection I think or maybe it was just called fall 2010 but either way um, for me that was like a quintessential fall collection the first color in that collection was called limited addiction and this is a really sort of standard red nail polish but it had a really really nice formula and then the collection had the dark plummy purple called velvet voyeur which I'm actually gonna put on later today um, and then there was the color in so psyched which is like an army green with a little bit of a pearl going going through it this is the color in merino cool and this is in the color mink muffs which I feel like were both very very popular because they were similar to a Chanel nail polish that came out at the same time and then there was the color in little brown dress which I didn't own very many browns and so I was really excited to purchase this because again it was really unique and and I just feel like um, they kind of stepped a little bit farther outside in more color and bold colors versus just your standard like unsaturated salon colors. In 2011 I still wasn't really into tracking Essie as a brand. I, I didn't really purchase that many at the time that they got released. For 2011 they had a spring collection. There was a wet. They always do like a bridal or wedding collection. The summer collection was called the Brazilian collection. I don't think I honestly can't remember off the top of my head if I purchased any of them at the same time they were, they were released. There was a resort collection, there was a fall collection called the Brand New Bag Collection, the winter collection called the Cocktail Bling Collection, and then that winter was when they released their Lux Effects Collection for the first time, which was all glitters, and there was one flaky, and it was like kind of strange that Essie was the brand to come out with chunky glitters in the winter time, at least in my opinion. Um, I purchased the entire collection. There was a chunky silver glitter called um, Set in Stones. There was a chunky blue glitter called Stroke of Brilliance. There was a sort of gold shimmery top coat called As Gold As It Gets. There was a pink chunky glitter called A Cut Above. Um, the pearly top coat was called pure pearl affection and then there was the flaky that came out and this was when I feel like flakies the opalescent flakies got super super popular and not a lot of people were able to sorry I'm gonna shift over and not a lot of people were able to purchase them because they were kind of hard to find um, and at that point I feel like 
what was it? Um, Picture Polish was the only one that had like opalescent, opalescent flakies outside of the standard brands. And then Essie came out with an opalescent flaky top coat and it just, people went nuts for it. And it was so pretty. It's still so pretty. It's still one of my favorite opalescent top coat flakies. Um, so yeah, I remember how big of a deal that was and how it just like, it kind of blew everyone's mind that Essie had done that. For 2012 in spring, they had a collection called Go Overboard. Um, I believe that's where this color came from. This is in the color Absolutely Sure, and it is a very, very soft, slightly green toned cream color. Um, it's like a green toned white cream, and it was really, really pretty and really ethereal and something that I feel like not a lot of people talked about. Um, the other color that I picked up from that collection was called Go Overboard, and it is a teal cream. And then they again had a wedding collection, a resort collection. Their summer collection was the Bikini Sotini collection, which is where Bikini Sotini came from, which I did not purchase at the time. Um, and then they also had a Metallics collection that summer, which I was not super impressed by. I picked one up just to kind of try it out. Um, it's called Blue Rhapsody. I ended up did like liking it because I obviously kept it, but um, I don't get a ton of use out of it because I don't wear a ton of sort of super metallic colors like this. For fall they had Stylenomics, um, they also had Yogaga, and then winter they had the Leading Lady Collection which I purchased two, two colors from. I feel like I may have purchased some throughout the year of 2012 but I honestly can't tell you if I bought them that year or I bought them later and I'll tell you again why I bought them later. Um, but for that winter, I definitely sought out these two. This is Leading Lady, which is a red jelly base with a red glitter going through it. It's not got the greatest formula, but it is a really pretty color. And then this is Beyond Cozy, which was my favorite. I think this was like at the time in the winter, one of my favorite colors to wear just in general. And it was one of the most um, pretty like Essie colors that has come out. This is a sort of platinum micro glitter and I purchased a couple of these. I have a backup of this because it's a really beautiful accent nail. So in 2013 the spring collection was the Madison Avon Hue collection and I honestly can't tell you like any nail polishes from that collection that were like big. Like I, don't, I feel like not a lot of people went crazy for that collection in particular. However on YouTube that's when like everyone went crazy for Essie. I feel like Ingrid, Miss Glamorazzi, just like suddenly started liking Essie nail polish or started talking about Essie nail polish, I guess, because she claims to have liked Essie nail polish forever, but she really only started talking about them at that point, which made Allison and Mariques talk about them, which made Elle, all that glitter talk about them. Um, and it's just like, it sort of spread from there. Suddenly everyone was super into Essie nail polish, um, like Nikki Philippi, Fleur de Force, Tati, like it just, like Essie just exploded on YouTube. And it kind of made me wonder like, why now? Like, why is suddenly S like everyone super into Essie? But it also made me want to be super into Essie. So I went and sought out a lot of the Essie nail polishes that all these girls were suddenly talking about. And it made me think like, but I've been into nail polish this whole time and now you guys are into nail polish and you like Essie nail polish? But again, it made me go and seek out um, oh, I guess Allison Amariques was always into nail polish and always did nail polish hauls and so she was kind of, she was different than everyone else. But suddenly everyone else wanted to like talk about Essie and it was strange. Um, but it made me go and seek out a ton of Essie nail polish that I had um, until then kind of overlooked both from their core collection and from random other collections that had been released over the last couple of years that I may have missed. I remember Ingrid talking about Fiji all the time, so I picked up Fiji. Um, it's a bright pink pastel color. It's very similar to OPI's Mod About You. She also talked about Vanity Fairest, which is a bridal pink color, but it has a shimmer running through it. I actually really like this one. This one I wear all the time. All the time, meaning whenever I seek out the bridal pink colors, it's one of like the three that I pick from. Um, and then she also talked about Essie's Watermelon, which is a bright pink cream. Uh, Bahama Mama got crazy big on YouTube because Ingrid was like, it's a great fall color. And then everyone was like, look, it's a great fall color. Um, and then Ingrid also really liked Knockout Pout and she also really liked Ladylike. So I picked up those. Um, there's a lot of like YouTube made me buy these. Essie nail polishes in this part of this video. Um, 
And then I remember Allison talking about Moochie Moochie. She talked about barefoot, topless and barefoot. And then she talked about San Tropez. And then I just, through being at the SE stand all the time, ended up picking up Mademoiselle, which is like a jelly pink bridal color, and Master Plan, which was from a previous collection, not their core collection, but I think from one of the 2011 collections, which is sort of like a gray um, fall color. I also picked up Cocktail Bling, which was from like 2012, which is like a grayish, slightly blue tone color. And then I picked up Trophy Wife and I picked up Aruba Blue, which are both very, very bright, metallic y, foily colors. And then I also picked up Marshmallow because somebody, I think it was Scrangy, one of the nail polish blogs talked about how this was great for jelly sandwich glitter manicures. So I picked this one up specifically for that. So like YouTube kind of made me increase my SE collection by like three. Like I tripled my SE collection because of YouTube. For 2013, after their spring collection and after it got kind of huge on YouTube, their resort collection was another one that I really, really liked in particular. Um, these two colors, this is First Timer and this is In the Cabana, were really bright sort of turquoise and green colors that reminded me a lot of the resort collection in 2010 that I absolutely loved. They had a Summer Neos collection, then they had a Bridal collection, their Summer collection that year was called Naughty Nautical, and then they had a Fall collection called For the Twill of It, which came out with the color um, After School Boy Blazer, which is a very, very, very dark navy blue color, which is really gorgeous, and I love this one. In winter, they had Shearling Darling, they had another Lux FX collection, and then they had the Holiday Color Encrusted in tre Treasures, which came out with... Um, I believe these two were in Encrusted Treasures, which were like different sort of glitter combo colors. And they had that one really, really horrible glitter that was like a black, like a really black sh sheer color with like big black, like not dense glitter in it. And it was, it was a weird nail polish. That's kind of where I was with Essie until, um, or up to now like I don't buy a lot of Essie nail polish based off of collections anymore I tend to just go to the Essie stand in CVS or Walgreens or whatever because I believe in 2013 or 2014 that's when Essie became available in all drugstores in the US and so it was a lot easier to find Essie nail polish so now for me the habit isn't to go look at Essie collections online it's just to kind of browse randomly through Essie core collection colors or SC stands that are available in the drugstore and just kind of randomly pick out colors that I want to purchase. I honestly don't remember the last time I wanted to purchase an entire SC collection because it's either there are colors that have been done before or I just like don't need them. Um, around 2013 as well I got into indie nail polishes and um, sort of strayed my focus away generally from mainstream brands to indie nail polishes so that's why also in 2013 I kind of just started randomly picking SE nail polishes from whatever stand was available and not really tracking collections so I don't actually have any other collections to talk to you guys about um, about SE because it's just not been um, a priority collection wise for me there have been some colors that I liked um, and that I have purchased one of them is Hipponema, and another one is called Ole Caliente. They're very similar. They're sort of bright, slightly orange-toned, um, brighter neon, corally colors. Um, I've had some other random purples, like Sitting Pretty and To Buy or Not To Buy. Um, there are some blues. This is Rock the Boat, which is very similar to Bikini T So Teeny. Um, so yeah, it's not like... I've not purchased SE nail polish since then, but it's also um, not a priority for me collection-wise, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I think actually the last collection that really made me pay attention was a Retro Revival collection, and then I saw that um, Starry Starry Night was not the original, and that the rest of the colors were all very 
reminiscent of Essie before they started releasing bright colors. So yeah, that is my Essie Flashback Friday video. If you guys have any Essie colors that you absolutely love, I would love to know. Um, go ahead and list them in the comments down below because I have been reading all of your comments. I'm sorry that I got sick last week and so I couldn't upload um, last week and kind of get back to you guys on comments and stuff, but I will be getting back to that and getting back into my routine. You guys can probably hear that I do still sound a little bit sick. I'll have swatches of all of these in my Instagram down below. I'm still working on my China Glaze ones because, again, getting sick just, like, sidetracked all of my other projects in life. So I've been having to do that. But um, otherwise, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you guys are new to my channel, if you could subscribe, that would totally make my day. Go ahead and hit the button. I believe it's actually down below now. I think... YouTube has changed like where the subscribe button has been forever. Um, they change it all the time. But anyway, if you could subscribe, that would totally make my day. Next week, I will have my Zoya video up, which will um, go back to kind of doing more collections because they're actually pretty good on coming out with like good collections in a timely manner all the time. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. And then otherwise, I will see you guys soon.